Hello sir, good morning. This is Nathaniel V. Suneha from BSN2A and here is my summation of the lessons that we've tackled in the subject Logic and Critical Thinking from Lesson 1 to Lesson 9. For Lesson 1, the general introduction, or understanding philosophy in a bigger picture. According to Camillosa 2016, philosophy is not only for philosophers. Every person has capacity to find the value of philosophy in his or her own life. However, without a formal introduction to the discipline, you may not be aware that you are engaging in philosophy. So, what's the beginning of philosophy? According to Socrates, it's wonder. Wonder is the beginning of philosophy. Wonder is a feeling of surprise coupled with admiration that is when one is being curious or being old. So, where philosophy originated? Um, Western philosophy originated in Miletus. And then, the first philosopher is Thales. He was the first philosopher because he was the first recorded in history to put philosophy in his writing. So, let's define what is philosophy. Philosophy means love of wisdom. As it is well known, love in this context is understood as strong desire for a particular object, while wisdom is understood as a correct application of knowledge. We have here the major branches of philosophy. We have the ontology, cosmology, psychology, theodicy, epistemology, logic, and ethics. Let's come now to lesson 2. It's about logic. So what is logic? It is commonly understood as a science of study or correct processes of thinking or reasoning. We have here now the types of logic. This is based on the form and content. We have the material object and we have also the formal object. And this is based on the process of thinking. We have the deductive logic and we have the inductive logic. And you can see here the importance of logic. So let's come now to lesson 3, the formation of concept and terms, faculty operation and product. The human mind generally operates in the following sequence. We have First, we have the sensation. This is by the five senses. Imagination, image making, apprehension or intellection, verbalization, oral or written. Here is the other content of the lesson 3, the apprehension or the face. The abstraction, the idea, or the product, the term, or the manifestation. For the classification of terms, we have the univocal terms, equivocal terms, and analogous terms. Classification according to extension. First, we have the universal term. And the universal term has two types, the explicit universals and the implicit universals. Number two, we have also particular term. Number three, we have also the singular term. Let's come now to lesson 4, Understanding Judgment and Proposition. Here are the components of proposition. We have the subject term or the S, predicate term or the P, copula or the C. Here are the properties of proposition. This is according to quantity of propositions. We have the universal propositions, particular proposition, and singular proposition. And here is the according to quality. We have affirmative proposition and negative proposition. Let's come now to lesson 5, understanding categorical propositions. We have the kinds of categorical proposition. We have the A, universal affirmative proposition, E, universal negative proposition, I, particular affirmative proposition, and O, for particular negative proposition. Here are the examples of categorical propositions. We have the three types of hypothetical propositions. First, we have the conditional proposition. Second is disjunctive proposition. We have the kinds of disjunctive proposition. Here are the strict disjunctive, imperfect or improper or broad disjunctive. Number three, we have also the conjunctive proposition. Lesson six, understanding, reasoning, immediate inference, and square opposition. Here are the methods or types of reasoning. We have the deductive reasoning and also inductive reasoning. Here are the examples. 
Here is the immediate inference, logical opposition or square opposition. We have the contradictory, contrary, subcontrary, and subalternation. So let's come now to lesson 7. It's understanding logical equivalence or deduction. Logical equivalence or deduction has four methods. Here are the conversion, aversion, contraposition, and the inversion. So first, let's talk about the conversion. Conversion has two kinds. We have the simple conversion and then the partial conversion. Let's talk about the aversion. It's a formulation of a new proposition by retaining the subject and the quantity of the original proposition. However, the quality of the original proposition is changed and the predicate term is replaced by its contradictory. The third is the contraposition. And it has two types, the partial and complete contraposition. And then the fourth method is the inversion. Inversion has also um, two types, the partial and then the complete inversion. Let's go on now to lesson 8. It is the understanding categorical syllogism. Structural elements of categorical syllogism. For the lesson 9, it's understanding figure and mood. For the discussion, figure and mood of categorical syllogism, as applied in categorical syllogism, a figure is the arrangement of the middle term in the premises, while mood refers to the classification of two premises and conclusions as A, E, I, and O. Here is the example. So what I have learned in logical and critical thinking subject is that um, I think I learned how to um to organize i mean to recognize and evaluate um arguments and also i learned the basic logical tools that help me to analyze arguments and also what i have learned in this subject is i already know how to determine the importance and relevance of the argument and ideas and also i already learned how to identify inconsistency and errors in reasoning i can apply what i have gained in this subject on how to problem solving and decision making this would enable us to make wise and rational decision rather than to be reactive ones this would also make us to be more problem solvers